Today I'm happy to share five pretty spring DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we're going to use some of these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. And they just peel right off of that paper backing. They are beautiful. They have a spring motif. We're going to use two of these little wooden boxes. Just one for this transfer though. So I'm going to take little parts and sections of this one sheet to go all the way around this box. I started off using my Mod Podge squeegee, but it does not give enough pressure. So I do recommend that you switch to either a, um, there's these Cricut type tools at Dollar Tree. Get one of those. They're harder and it works better because you really want to make sure you burnish that down to get a nice finish where everything sticks just like this. You can see it's hanging over just a little bit on the W, not a problem. You can press that down and just sand it right off. Pretty much it scrapes right away when you touch it. And I'm going to do that on the edges too, just to make it look like a stamp rather than a transfer. I love this little bicycle, very springy. Now I'm going to move to another part of the transfer. And you don't have to be concerned about it reaching all the way to the edges. I wanted to be sure that I could use this one transfer on the entire thing. So there are gonna be some spots that look blank, but we're gonna fill those in at the end. So if you start to raise it up slowly and you notice some is still stuck to the paper instead of on your project, just lay it back down and go ahead and apply a little more pressure. And then I'm just sanding it off like I did the rest of it. I'm gonna move around to another section and keep going. So this box has four sides that you can see and a bottom and an open top. So we need four areas to cover this box. And I think that this looks great. I love these little wooden boxes from Dollar Tree. The color is already beautiful. The grain is gorgeous. I didn't feel the need to put any stain on it because honestly, I don't know that you would be able to see all of the light colors if we used a dark stain. So this is fresh and light colored. I think it's very pretty. Moving on, we have enough here for another side. Don't be concerned if it tears or if there's some pieces that are kind of rough looking. It's just gonna give it an aged look and that is okay. That is fine. It's gonna look beautiful and shabby chic and rustic. See, I'm taking this butterfly that had a little bit of damage and I'm just taking one of those wings to put in a a little empty spot on the bottom of the flowers and then a word that was left over I'm gonna take that word and put it right there don't be concerned about the band-aids I've been doing some work on my carpet we're pulling up carpet and working on getting new flooring so I've torn my poor little fingers to pieces but this is how it looks so far and I'm gonna find another piece that's on the transfer paper still and just rub that down on that side and that's so simple so very simple. You can use any transfers you like. So for the other box, we're going to use this old calendar from Dollar Tree. So if you still have your calendars and don't know what to do with them, pull them out. This particular one I love because of the flowers. So I'm gonna take out July 22 and pull that calendar out and then decide how much we're gonna need to go on the box. So it's just under three inches and I'm gonna measure here on my paper on the illustrations right about three inches. I'm gonna do one on the bottom, one in the middle, and one in the top. And this will give us an area and a little kind of guideline where we can put the ruler down and then make a nice clean line with a rotary cutter. Very simple. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and then you can do the bottom and the top as well if you would like. So you have a bigger choice, uh, you know, variety of which piece you wanna use. Now, I'm using this dark gray because Oftentimes when you have a lighter background and you put a calendar page down, you can see those black lines through it when you Mod Podge it. So if you go ahead and start off with a dark color or black, you won't be able to see that. Those lines will just disappear. And so that's why I do this. I've done this method many times using the calendar pages and um, this works great for me. I'll put a link down below of some videos that I have done with Dollar Tree calendars. You can get lots of projects, more than 12 projects out of one calendar. 
Okay, so I've cut a bunch of pieces and I'm just looking to see which ones are gonna be my favorite, the ones that I wanna feature on this box. And these are the ones I'm gonna use. And I have some matte Mod Podge. You can use whatever kind of Mod Podge you want. I won't be putting anything on the top. I'm just gonna be using it underneath. And I'm gonna kind of go with and against the grain in this box. I'm gonna turn it upside down because I can center it better if I can see all the sides instead of just slapping it on the top. And then trying to move it around and possibly tearing it. I just put it down like a puzzle piece with the intentional overhang and you'll see how we fix that. So the squeegee works perfect for this project. You can see here we have extras on the edges and we're just going to take that foam sanding block or whatever, you can use an emery board if you have it, and just kind of shear that off the edges and you have a nice clean finish. You wanna do that on the top, both sides, and also on your bottom. And it kind of gets, lets that gray shine through just a little bit on your seams and it's just a really pretty look. We're gonna continue around and do the same thing. I don't use a ton of Mod Podge because I don't want bubbles and issues. And thankfully with this calendar paper, I had no problem at all with bubbles or kind of um, waves. You know how you get the little waves in the paper sometimes? No problem at all. And as you can see, you cannot see those dark lines underneath there at all. Same process on this box. On this side of the box, just go around and sand it off. And be careful, you don't wanna cut into the paper that is right beside it. Just make sure you get your angle right and you won't have any problems. And this is how it looks when it is completed. Isn't that cute? Oh, and I did go down on the inside a little bit with that gray paint. So, no need to do the bottom. Now I'm gonna show you a very easy way to style these. I just have some of these, um, these were donated to me from my generous benefactor who donated all the supplies to my channel. And these were from, I believe, Michaels. And there are several different kinds that I have you'll be seeing in my projects. And I'm just taking two of my favorite colored ones and putting them down in these boxes so you can get an idea of how this would look. These are very cute. I love these flowers. If you know the name of these flowers, let me know down in the comments below. Now I got some Arteza goodies. I was so happy to be contacted by them and have the opportunity to try their items. So I'm gonna be using the Arteza matte white premium sheets and I got a pack of scissors. This is a three pack and they have titanium blades, non-stick coated blades, and then stainless steel 3D blades. I was in desperate need of some more scissors. So to give you an idea how these look, these are so sharp looking. Sharp in two ways. Very nice looking scissors. It was time for an upgrade. I really needed to do something different. They got these little grips on here, which make it very ergonomic. It's, they're easy to hold on to. They won't slip if you've got kind of wet hands and you're working in a hurry. And then here is the white paper. Now this has a plaid backing or a little grid on the back, which makes it convenient if you need to cut things down to save your paper. And I just wanna show you the difference in the color. See, there's white in the candle and then it looks almost like a purplish color. You won't notice this later. Now here I'm just reading my directions so I know exactly what I need to do. And I'm going to use this as my project backing. This I got from the thrift store. It already had something written on it and I couldn't get it off. So we're just gonna go over it with some of the Dollar Tree's chalkboard paint. Very easy. My favorite flat brushes that I use all the time. And I'll show you why. Once you start putting your paint down, you can lay your brush on its side and get right in the curves, just like that. Makes it perfect. I love these brushes. So once it's done, you're gonna let that dry and start working on your design. So I've gone over here, chosen a design on my Cricut, and I'll link what I used below. And I'm beginning to cut it out. It's down on my mat. And then once it is cut out, I know you can't see it yet, but you will in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the paper I'm not gonna use because I can use that on more projects because that's gonna save me a little money. I'm just gonna take my weeding tool and just pull off my excess and put it aside. 
I'm going to burnish this down with my little tool here and then begin to pull this off. Something I love about Arteza, their paper is their, well, this is a vinyl paper, is that it is so easy to remove and it is so easy to weed. Can you see that there's a slight purplish color on that white backing? It's just two different colors of white, but you'll see that it doesn't make any difference once you put it down. It's pretty, pretty amazing. So I'm just weeding it here. Now I'm gonna put on my transfer tape and just burnish that down really well so it will lift up nicely for me. And then once I get it completely rubbed down there, I'm gonna lift it off and then we're gonna put it right in the center. And I'm just kind of using the guides of those curves there so I know exactly where to put it. I love, love, love this. It's so pretty and you cannot tell once I pull off my transfer paper, you cannot tell the difference between that and the color in the trim of this board, which is pretty amazing. But it comes away very easily from my transfer tape. Don't you love a good book or a good story? Yes, I love this stuff. You'll be seeing this paper again in another project. So the next one we're going to do is going to be using this embroidery hoop and then I have some of this cream colored burlap and it's just a thick roll and it is from burlapfabric.com. I'm just going to trim this off and I'm going to fit it down in this embroidery hoop. This is easy to use. If you've ever used an embroidery hoop, you just use the little screw and the little hardware on the side to loosen it and tighten it and then it stretches that fabric that's on the inside nice and flat and there we go not hard to do if you have any problems with your fabric kind of wrinkling just flip it over and pull on it a little bit from the sides and it'll go down in place just like it needs to be all right once that is done and i feel like it is secure i'm going to trim off all of that extra on the sides now i'll start off using little scissors because i thought that would be better since i have to get so close but my scissors just were not behaving themselves. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest and Instagram. So I got out my new scissors and I'm just taking those and going around the edge. And they cut very nicely. Now I'm going slowly because I don't wanna cut the wood, but yeah, they cut very nicely. So now we're gonna start on the floral part and I'm just gonna use some of these pretty pink flowers that I got from the thrift store and all of this greenery is from the thrift store they're part of some i think bouquets that probably came from a high-end store because these are in very good condition and i just cut them apart and i'm just going to piece these together and i've added some greenery and these beautiful little wine colored they look i don't know they mm, i don't think they're roses but they're very pretty and they look nice with this bundle. I think the color combination is pretty. I'm gonna use my zip ties here because we wanna make sure that all of those little end pieces, even the little short end pieces, stay together. So it's almost like we're making the base of a swag. And like I said, the little ends are short, so we're gonna to have to do it in two places instead of in the center so that it reaches all of them. Just cut off your excess, and then you can work on the bundle of your bouquet just a little bit. This will very easily fit through the weave and then wrap around the arrangement and around the base. So that's what I've done there and I'm just going to clip it off. I'm using this thinner ribbon now which is the same color almost but the weave is a little bit tighter than what we used in the embroidery hoop and I'm just going to make a loop and the first one is going to be eight inches and I'm going to do this four times. That's going to give us four little pieces on each end or four loops on each end of the bow that I'm making and I know you cannot see it here and I apologize for that but you get the gist see that and then I'm just gonna find my center and pinch it together this is a it's not a thick ribbon but it's kind of stiff so you can see that it holds its form and I love that it's not something I'm used to, to uh, dealing with with ribbons. They're usually so soft they just lose their shape. But these, 
these work great. So then you know how you do a bow. You're going to start fluffing. And there's going to be four on one side of the knot, four on the other side of the knot. And then you're going to have your little tails that are left there. And you can just trim those tails if you want to. Whichever way you like to do it. Keep fluffing it out. You could use a different color if you wanted to for this. Or you could use a wired ribbon if you wanted to. I want to add another bow in the center of this. It's the same kind of bow, but this time I only did it two times back and forth. And I used a five inch piece instead of an eight inch piece. I just laid it right on the top, tied it, wrapped it around, tied it in the back. So it's a nice knot so that when we're pulling it out, it stays. Look how nicely it stands up there. That's really nice for a ribbon that doesn't have any wire. So you see a little ornament up there that says Blossom. That came from Dollar Tree. I think it looks really nice with what we have going on in the bottom. And it's a nice little sign to put on the top. You know, you don't have to have a Cricut if you want to use something with words on it or something that's really pretty just to adorn your arrangements or your signs, whatever you got going on. Think outside the box. So now I'm going to take two pieces that are about 19 inches long and I'm going to make tails. I'm just going to overlap them, pinch them in the middle and push them into a V. You can see how I did that there. I'm going to add some hot glue and I've already got the bow glued down and I'm going to add the hot glue and glue the tail down. Watch your fingers so you don't burn yourself. Be very careful. And I decided I want to put a loop in the middle. So I'm just going to take this little short piece of ribbon, it's about three inches long, fold it over on itself with some hot glue to make a ring. And then once it's cooled off, a little hot glue in the middle, and that'll finish off that bow. Now to attach this, I could have laid this down when I laid down that wide ribbon that's inside the embroidery hoop and just push this string through the frame. But this was an afterthought, so just go ahead and wrap it around the back. And then I put a little bit right across the top just to hold the string so that this doesn't try to rock back and forth. I'm not going to secure it down on the ribbon though. I'm going to leave it like it is. And if it's hung up nicely and securely, it won't move. So I decided to add just a little more of that same greenery right underneath the bow so that you can see it a little bit better. And just to add a little more height to this project so it doesn't look so, you know, side to side squatty. This elongated it just a bit. Then you can just take those tails, you can keep cut them at a shorter length, you can leave them long, you could do two different lengths, you can dovetail them, you can cut them at a slant, whatever you like best. Last easiest project, we're going to use some satin nickel spray, some white wax, we're going to use just some wipes that I have here to clean my little bird. And then the little bird, I've had him for a very long time, I used to use him in my Easter decor, but he's got some bangs, he's a little, got a little wear on him, so I decided I'm going to do something a little bit different. I did an owl at Christmas time and absolutely loved it. Now you can just use a pick when they have a hole in them, stick them in some foam and spray paint them. Now once he's nice and dry, this is just one coat of paint. Once he's dry, this is how he looks. Very nice. Kind of looks like pewter a little bit. Then I'm going to take this white wax and my little chippy brush and just go all over this little bird. On his wings, on his feet, especially any place that there's any texture. And if you do a project, you want to use wax, the more texture, the better. Or, you know, the more cracks and crevices, the better. Um, the owl actually has a lot more detail in it than my little bird turned out, but I'm very happy with him. Alright, so now I'm just going to take a cloth and just start to wipe that off. I started off with a piece, it's like a little piece of scrap linen that I had, but this is definitely not what you want for this project. This is how he looks so far, and I have a mess on my hands because they're wet. So I went and got an extra towel, and I'm just going to start rubbing that off. I'm rubbing kind of with the grain of the feathers and the tail so that the white wax will stay in those low spots. You don't want to just completely rub it all back off. Just be careful of how, you know, what direction you rub it in so that you leave some of that wax because that's the point. Now doesn't he look aged and adorable? 
He is just too cute. He looks like a little metal bird. Or maybe even pewter. Kind of looks like pewter, doesn't it? He's very cute. I've enjoyed his little makeover. Here's the box that we use the calendar on. If you like that watercolor look, perfect for you. Here is our Cricut project that we did. Here's our beautiful burlap wreath or hanger, whichever you wanna call it. The other box that we did using the Dollar Tree rub on transfers, the spring transfers. If you enjoyed these projects, I would love it if you would subscribe and join my family. I am so appreciative of all of you. I really appreciate you stopping by and I will see you again real soon. Bye.